All right, Tone, let's just get straight into it. Um, Alexander Usyk, the new heavyweight champion of the world, beating Anthony Joshua at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Both of us were there. You know what's funny, Tone? In the lead up to it, you've been saying, I think, to anyone that would listen, Alexander Usyk was two things. A, the best fight you've ever fought in your life, and B, a very, yes. very dangerous opponent for Anthony Joshua. And I guess on Saturday night, you proved to be both of those things. He did, Addy. I sold everyone that would listen. If this is a boxing match, he wins. I thought AJ would jump on him and, and go for the stoppage, but it didn't work out that way. I think AJ wakes up on Sunday and he kicks himself a little bit. But listen, this is professional boxing man at the highest level. Uh, don't box with a master boxer. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard lesson that he's learned, but it's one that he will. And I believe he'll bounce back, he'll come back stronger. Very similar to the way he did after the uh, Ruiz fight. So I remember you were in camp. I remember seeing a picture of you, Chisora and AJ, maybe about a week, two weeks before the fight. So you, you went to go and see AJ in camp. I'm guessing you had a conversation about maybe the tactics that he might employ on fight night. Were you were you surprised by the tactics? I know a lot of people were. Um, was you surprised that he didn't just put his size and strength on him like we've seen with AJ in the past? Were you surprised that it was a boxing match? I, I, to the level of the boxing match, yes. Uh, I was there to watch his last sparring session and he looks good, but you've got to understand that them sparring partners are not Alexander Usyk. Yeah. And and they're not going to present the problems that Alexander Usyk will present. Uh, he, he was in great shape. He's got a fantastic coach in Robert McCracken. It's just so hard, Daddy, when you go in with someone like Alexander Usyk, who's literally watching you for the first three rounds every reaction and move you make to everything he does he absorbs it like a computer and then he flips it round and he makes you look at yourself and all this time you're thinking throughout the bout so by the time anthony joshua got to the end of the 11th round he was completely mentally exhausted and he showed a serious set of plums to go out for that 12th round he really did because mate exhaustion had seriously kicked a lot of people have maybe questioned the tactics and the corner advice of Rob McCracken. Obviously, like a couple of people in the corner. Some people said maybe too many cooks in the kitchen. We know that AJ mm. is loyal to Rob McCracken. Um, AJ has Gosh. added people to his team before. Um, let, let's just put it on the table. Do, do you think potentially a, a trainer switch is needed? Do you think there's enough between AJ and Rob McCracken to get the job done in the rematch? Do you think they might need to add someone else into the camp? What's your take? My take is that Robert McCracken is an absolutely fantastic coach. The best GB coach of all time. His, his record speaks for itself, Addy. The medal mm -hmm. halls he's had from the London Olympics to the Beijing Olympics to the Tokyo Olympics, he's just medal hall after medal hall. A former brilliant professional fighter himself. He's got a wealth of experience and knowledge. Created fighters from scratch in the likes of Carl Froch. You know, has added and made Anthony Joshua from scratch. From a novice amateur boxer, to a world champion silver medalist, to an Olympic gold medalist, to a British champion, to a you know, to a unified heavyweight champion of the world. These are this is not someone who's fine the fighter and like got the finished article and took him on. This is a guy who's created brilliant fighters from scratch. So that isn't the issue here. The issue is absorbing and doing exactly the following the tactics that these guys employ. And if too many people are in your ear, then that's gonna come back to bite you. Yeah, and look, it did come back to bite him. Um, let's talk about Alexander Usyk. Look, fantastic performance. I sometimes feel like when a favourite loses, we try and unpack as to why the favourite lost rather than giving credit to Usyk. No, I, mean, I spoke to Usyk's promoter, Alex Krasiuk, uh, today, and I asked him about the performance and what level, what it was, or what score would you give the performance? This is what he had to say. It's a good performance, but definitely not the best because Usyk rated his performance himself as the 7 out of 10 means that he still has some space to move up. I saw him in a training camp. It was an exhausting work. He, he worked half a year. He worked so hard. And now what he did is, is history already. But there's still a there's still couple of fights, a couple of huge fights to go to get to the limp of the professional boxing. Alex Krasiak there, um, Alexander Usyk's promoter, talking about the performance. Uh, Tony, he said that Usyk scored this fight, or his performance, sorry, only a 7 out of 10. Um, it wasn't his best performance, he said as well. I mentioned your performance, you heard it there, and Gassiev. Um, he said that AJ wasn't his best performance. Um, bearing that in mind, as an AJ fan, and I am a self-confessed AJ fan, 
that scares me to know that Usyk, according to himself, has more levels to go up. I 100% believe he has got more levels to go through and gears to go through, Abby. Uh, he will only get better as a heavyweight and more comfortable. I spoke with him after the fight on Saturday uh, and, and I implored him to run us as well the rematch and then walk away. And he laughs at me and he says, I'm going, I am just getting started, my friend. Uh, he, yeah. he is a phenomenal athlete, a phenomenal fighter. And he is only going to get better in the heavyweight division the more comfortable he gets. I just don't ever want to see this boy lose because of size. No fighter in the history of boxing should ever lose purely because someone is bigger than you, Adi. And that's what, that's what messes with me a little bit here. I just don't want to see him lose because no one is a better boxer than him in the world in, the, in these divisions. No one's a better boxer than Alexander Usyk. So why should he lose? And that's what is the worrying factor when it comes to him. But if AJ implements what he what he's capable of doing, that's not the AJ I seen against Vladimir Klitschko on Saturday night. That's not the AJ I seen going to finish Kubrat Pulev. So, but then again, that's not the Alexander Usyk we seen facing the likes of Morat Gassiev or the likes of me. So both guys can improve just who can implement the best of themselves early on in the fight. That will be the determining factor in the rematch. Yeah, you're already selling the rematch for us, Tony. Look, it will be a great fight even when it happens. Eddie Hearn has spoken about February or March. So let's see if that rematch can get done as soon as that. That surprised me that it will be done that quick. But I think both fighters do want it right. A lot of money on the table. A uh, quick word about the undercard. Um, loads of action. Callum Smith. Uh, getting the win, a stoppage win as well. A very good performance by Callum Smith. Um, underwhelming by Campbell Hatton, right? I think it's fair to say. Florian Marcoux getting the win uh, as well. Um, quick word on Callum Smith and, and Campbell Hatton as well. Do they need to maybe remove Campbell Hatton from these big pay-per-view cards and maybe putting on some some of the smaller shows that DAZN and Matchroom put on? Uh, it's a lot of pressure on Campbell Hatton. You know, you come with that same name and there's ultimate pressure, but it also opens many doors and more opportunities. So... You know, it, you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place, Ali, for Campbell Hatton. I didn't think that was his best performance on Saturday. I actually thought he lost. But it's one that he'll learn a lot from. As for Callum Smith, wow, he turned the lucky out on Castillo. I mean, literally the lights went out and, and it was a very, very worrying knockout. Uh, he done something that world champion Dimitri Bivol couldn't do. He wiped out Castillo with one shot. 